Hello and welcome. This is Armored Warfare, created by Obsidian Entertainment. My name is Joshua Morris and I'm the senior producer at My.com. Some of you may know me as Jinx71 on the forums, and today I'll be talking about vehicle classes and roles in Armored Warfare. The modern battlefield has many types of vehicles performing a variety of functions. Many of these will be represented in Armored Warfare. There are five classes in Armored Warfare. Main Battle Tanks, Light Tanks, Armored Fighting Vehicles, Tank Destroyers, and Self-Propelled Guns. Each of these has a role to play on the battlefield. The designers at Obsidian had three major goals when it came to creating vehicle classes in Armored Warfare. First, each class should have a distinct role. Players should easily be able to recognize what that role is based on the characteristics of the vehicle and its special abilities. Second, classes should encourage teamwork and not allow any one class to dominate or be self-sufficient. Each class should have strengths and weaknesses. And lastly, while Armored Warfare is based on real-life vehicles and many aspects of the game are realistic, it's important that we make a good game before making a good simulation. This freedom should make each class feel right and ultimately be fun. Before we move on, it should be noted that not all the features that I'm going to describe are currently in place. Some may very well change during closed beta as we get testing feedback. So while not all of this is final, we felt it was important to give you an insight on in what we're trying to create for you. So let's talk about each class and their roles. Main battle tanks form the backbone of any modern army. This is because they have the armor needed to stand toe to toe with the enemy and survive. They also generally have significant firepower and mobility making them a well-balanced platform. You should play a main battle tank if you like to mix it up and smash people in the face. This is not a subtle class. The main battle tank has many advantages. Main battle tanks have the best armor in the game, often being invulnerable from enemy fire from the front. This allows them to hold the line and provide a secure point for the rest of the team to operate. They can also take a beating, represented by their large pool of hit points. Main battle tanks will be able to shirk off damage that would otherwise kill other more fragile classes in the game. Lastly, they have big guns. Only the TD will be able to keep up or surpass you in the amount of damage you can deliver to a single target. While most MBTs can reach decent speed, they don't have the acceleration to match some of their more nimble foes. They should make sure to keep their flank secure so they don't reveal any of the chinks in their rear armor. You should rely on your teammates for scouting. Your role is to hold the line and push where needed. As I said before, main battle tanks are not subtle. Don't expect to hide in a bush or sneak up on anyone across an open field. Main battle tanks are the basic core element in armored warfare, and we found them to be so badass we haven't needed to give them any special abilities to define them. This of course may change over the course of development, and we'd love to hear what you think. Next we have the light tanks. These are the more agile cousins of the main battle tank. This class is for people who think that heavy armor is not as important as agility when it comes to surviving on the modern battlefield. They are unable to go toe to toe with MBTs in a stand up fight and should never try to slug it out while sitting at long distances. They have decent guns but need to maneuver to effectively apply that damage and stay alive. Against other classes, they are very effective and should be able to screen a team's forces from unwanted incursions from lighter vehicles. Light tanks require a lot of skill to play, but can be a headache for an enemy team when used correctly. And like the dashing cavalrymen of old, light tanks require a lot of daring and aggressiveness to be effective. For light tanks, speed is life. Light tanks have enough acceleration and maneuverability to dodge MBTs and weave in out of the front lines, firing all along the way. While they don't match the AFV's raw speed and acceleration, they do have enough armor and firepower to quickly neutralize those threats. To really drive this home and distinguish them from MBTs, we have given them increased mobile accuracy, allowing them to effectively fire on the move with less penalty to aim. While the light tanks can use their mobility to get into the action, we wanted to give them the ability to get out as well. Light tanks have the additional capacity for smoke dischargers, allowing them to dramatically increase the stealth of those around them so they can concentrate on dispatching the enemy and quickly getting out of harm's way. They can also capture bases faster than MBTs, TDs, and SBGs. We also want light tanks to be effective circle strafers. 
So we may also give them the ability to auto-target more effectively than other classes, even leading moving targets. While this may not help against heavily armored targets like MBTs, it should give a good defensive advantage versus lighter armored foes. This has not been added to the game yet, however. Don't let the name fool you. These are not scouts. They must still rely on other teammates to expose enemies, then use their mobility to take advantage. These are also not main battle tanks. A driver that relies on armor will soon find themselves dead. They may have enough armor and hit points to take a few hits and get some lucky bounces, but they should rely on mobility and smoke to keep them alive. While they do have smaller footprints than main battle tanks, they shouldn't rely on camo to save them. I can't stress this enough. It's their mobility that keeps them alive. Next we have Armored Fighting Vehicles. This class contains a vast variety of light vehicles seen on the modern battlefield. While some specific AFEs may emphasize spotting, base capturing, stealth, or high-speed combat, they all have quickness and mobility in common. We have added multiple class-specific mechanics to distinguish between these types of AFEs and also improve the general experience of this class as a whole. This class contains many vehicles that are capable of amazing maneuverability and speed. They are, however, very fragile, and you should think not twice, but three times before mixing it up with enemy units. Life as an AFE is dangerous, so they must rely on their small size and stealth to keep them alive. This is why we have given the AFEs the best stealth rating in the game while on the move. Spotting is one of the key roles of the AFE, and they have the best view range in the game. In addition, they get a bonus to this view range when stationary, so if they can find a good spot to hide, they can push this advantage even further. As you may know, all classes in the game get a warning when they are first spotted. However, AFPs take this to the next level. They will also get a constant warning whenever they are in view of an enemy. This gives them the needed awareness to keep themselves alive. This class ability makes AFPs great teammates, making everyone more effective. The basic idea is that AFP players will be able to designate targets by hitting the V key and keeping them within their sights for a few seconds. While designated, an enemy target will lose stealth, show up on the minimap, and most devastating at all, the fire the target receives will hit for maximum damage. For example, if a shot would normally do 90 to 110, it would be guaranteed to do 110 damage as long as the target is designated. This is a very powerful ability and will be restricted with cooldowns and timers. Lastly, AFEs have the fastest capture rate in the game. This gives them the incentive to stay alive into the late game and help capture bases quickly before the enemy can respond. Quite simply, everything on the battlefield can easily kill you. You need to be smart, fast, and stealthy to keep alive. Next, what happens when you strap on the biggest gun you can find onto something with no armor? You get the Tank Destroyer. This class is a fusion of the AFP and MBT, but the result is something that plays quite differently than either class. Tank Destroyers are great snipers. TDs are fairly stealthy, but come into their own when using terrain and remaining stationary. To this end, TDs get a camo bonus for remaining stationary. TDs can mount big guns, and they have a good rate of fire. To reinforce our sniper role, we would like to introduce an ability called Sniper's Position. The player can target the most vulnerable spots of an enemy vehicle, maximizing damage. Players will get a 15% bonus to damage if they spend the extra time to let their reticle close to its minimum circumference. Guns on TDs are often mounted higher, allowing large range of gun depression. Smart drivers will be able to use this to their advantage. Tank destroyers will have to rely on their teammates to spot enemy vehicles. They will tend only to have better spotting ranges than main battle tanks. The sacrifice for a huge gun and great mobility is armor, so it's best to avoid trading shots with any enemy vehicles. Last but not least, we have self-propelled artillery. It's very important to note that our vision for artillery does not resemble the placeholder version you may have seen in videos in early pre-alpha builds of the game. We have recently been very active in getting community feedback on this weapon system to make sure it's a balanced and interesting class in the game. 
first we'll be changing the perspective of artillery mode from a top-down satellite view to a perspective view that puts the player in the view of the path of the shell traveling toward the target. This view should make artillery play more cohesive with the rest of the game. We want artillery to be about doing damage over wide areas and using specialty shells to support their team. It's not intended to be a huge single target damage dealer. Artillery have the ability to affect the battlefield from the safety of the rear areas. They also don't need line of sight to deliver their ordnance downrange. SPGs tend to mount huge guns that can cause damage over large areas. While they won't necessarily do a tremendous amount of damage to a single target, they can do a lot of overall damage to an enemy formation that decides to group too close together. One area we would really like to explore is giving SPGs many types of specialty rounds to support their team. These rounds tend to have dramatic special effects, but do little or no damage. We will be testing the following rounds. ECM rounds. These would disable the minimap and remove over-target markers of every vehicle in the blast radius for a set amount of time. Illumination rounds. This round would fall from the sky, revealing all enemies within a target area, breaking any stealth or camo. This effect would last as long as the shell is in the air. We think specialty rounds are pretty cool and we'd love to hear your feedback on them. All the advantages of an SPG come with one really big downside. They have a hard time defending themselves against any enemy that is able to find them. Every time a self-propelled gun fires, it gives a ping on the minimap to all enemy SPGs. This means that Artie must continue to relocate or they will find themselves on the wrong end of counter-battery fire. Classes and their roles that they represent are very important to us, and we would like each class experience to be unique. Our commander system further enhances this ability to shape the classes and tailor them to a player's playstyle. These roles and special abilities also encourage strong team interaction. In a typical game, you could see a main battle tank fixing an enemy target in place, while a self-propelled gun blinds the group with an ECM round. This would allow an AFV to use their ability to designate targets so that a flanking tank destroyer and light tank can safely flank an enemy and deliver maximum damage. We think this is pretty exciting. So there you have it, Armored Warfare's five classes and roles. So what do you think? We'd love to hear your feedback about these mechanics and your comments and suggestions on what we've talked about today. Until next time, see you guys out on the forums.